today I am at the fish ladder at the Susquehanna River in Shemokin Dam next to the Fabric Dam. I'm meeting the Riverkeeper group here today and some others. There's a member of DCNR that's going to show up, maybe SRBC. And what we are going to do is empty out these pools that have been gathering in the fish ladder. This is the second time these pools have collected. So we'll be possibly electrifying some of the water here, scooping out some fish and returning them into the Susquehanna River. The Faber Dam sits between the towns of Sunbury and Shemokin Dam on the Susquehanna River, just below the confluence of the West Branch Susquehanna River. This is the longest inflatable dam in the world measuring 2,100 feet in length. The dam is controlled with seven inflatable bags that connect between concrete piers that sit about 300 feet apart. The bags are deflated during the winter months and the river level above the dam drops. Recently, a fish passage facility, also known as a fish ladder, was installed on the Shemokin Dam side of the dam, allowing fish to pass the dam when it is inflated. When the dam is deflated, the fish ladder serves no purpose, but it also traps ponds of water in the fish ladder. These little pools act as a resting place when the dam is inflated. They are necessary for its operation. The downside is when the dam is deflated, they hold trapped ponds of water where any fish in there won't be able to migrate out and could also become easy prey for eagles, herons, and other birds of prey, which are present and active while I was there on this day in December. The fish ladder facility was needed for fish to pass the dam during the inflated months but it needs to be maintained when the dam is deflated. That's where the Middle Susquehanna River Keeper Association and Susquehanna University come in to help capture the trapped fish and release them back into the river. Fish are collected using electrofishing equipment from Susquehanna University and also identified and measured for research purposes before being released back into the river just above the dam. We start by unloading a truck full of supplies by Susquehanna University's Dr. Dan Ressler and Sarah Ashcraft. DCNR employees helped us truck the supplies right up to the fish ladder. Sarah and Dan fired up their electro-fishing backpacks and got right to work. The Middle Susquehanna River Keepers John Zach Tansky, Marissa Krames, and myself followed them around with nets and transported the fish to aerated buckets. Rock bass, smallmouth. Or probably a bluegill, not a rock bass. When do 
length first. I'll go Sounds to this good. Go with 65. More than 250 fish will be rescued on this day, including 15 smallmouth bass, 40 rosy side dace, 7 American eel, and other species. Bluegill, red ear sunfish, rock bass, red breast sunfish, swallowtail shiners, mad toms, fantail darters, greenside darters, pumpkin seed, white crappie, fall fish, creek chub, black crappie, blunt nose minnows, and spot fin shiner. Documenting this process is important for everyone involved and will help us understand the migration of aquatic species and improve the operations of the fish ladder. The pools in the fish passage area fill up every time the river level gets above 12 feet while the dam is deflated for the winter. Last winter this happened a few times and a total of over 860 fish had to be rescued. As you've seen, even when the inflatable dam is down for the winter, the river's story doesn't stop. It continues, and so does the struggle for the fish that call it home. These trapped pools of the fish ladder become unexpected prisons, especially during those heavy winter rains. It's a challenging reality, but it's one we face with dedication and care. Our work rescuing, identifying, and returning these fish to the river 
is a labor of love. Every fin we count, every measurement we take, is a testament to the resilience of these creatures and our commitment to their survival. We see the individual lives behind the statistics, the vital role they play in the river's ecosystem. But we can't do this alone. We need your help to spread awareness and ensure these fish have a chance at a healthy future. By liking and sharing this video, you're not just showing support, you're becoming a vital part of this conservation effort. You're helping us reach more people, educate communities, and ultimately protect these incredible fish. Let's work together to ensure that the river's song and the lives it sustains continues for generations to come. Thank you for watching and thank you for caring.